Right then, so let's have a little bit of fun with this sunflower. A little bit of a quirky technique I just came across having a bit of a play. Because again, it's one of those things that um, you can look at the finished samples and look at what we do and me, I and the team and think, whoa, okay, if you're new to it, that don't know how they got that, don't know how they got there. Let me show you how absolutely um, kind of free and easy and just, well, it's called scribbly. It's scribbly colouring. That's that's it. I can't, I'll have a look. It'll be, it'll be clearer. Have a look at this. So the first thing is, this is what we're going to start off with. This little stamped here, thing here. I'm, I've stamped the sunflower, the wireframe version, using a pale distressing. Either, I think I use linen or old paper, something like that. Just enough to see, but as pale as you can get it and still see it. Next thing I'm going to do is going to pick a pen and the micron pens I'm absolutely loving. And <clears throat> what I would say is find a set that has a smaller nib in it. 0, 01 or 0, 03, maybe a 0 0.5, 0, 05. Um, I'll use a 0, 03. <coughs> Excuse me. So what I'm going to do, the idea here is I am out of my comfort zone, right? I'm not doing what I would normally do. I'm wanting to draw wibbly wobbly. Um, without precision and make it look a little bit looser and quirkier than I would normally draw. <coughs> now that isn't easy if that's not your natural drawing style and it isn't mine so it takes some getting used. So don't think oh she does this all the time or that you know this is what you do. It doesn't always help because it's like um it, it's this is this is when you're used to doing something a certain way it's much more difficult to unlearn than to do it like that in the first place so if you have not got the steadiest of hands brilliant this is this this is the one for you if you have got a steady hand have a, maybe 10 cups of coffee or something and try it again you'll find it's much easier or just be in my presence for a while you know you'll find you'll be like whoa a bit cheeky yeah, people do but anyway so I'm going around. Now, the other thing I'm doing to help me with this is I'm holding the pen. Look at how far back I'm holding the pen. If I was drawing this in a more precise fashion, my hand would be much closer to the nib and I would be anchoring my hand and I would want like precision and I'd make sure I've got a, a much better um, you know, stability while I was drawing. But I'm deliberately making it more difficult to get that look by holding the pen way back and if the lines look broken sometimes as well that's great and also I should mention don't feel you have to be precision on going on top of the lines that I've got there ignore some of them put some new ones in if you want it doesn't matter what you're doing is you're creating this um really fun loose um you know original quirky outline and that's it and look I'm not even going where that leaf is. I might want to, let's, let's, I might even put another leaf in there, look. Yeah, there's another leaf. I might put another leaf there. Because I can. All right, and then we'll put a little bit there. A little bit, look, not super detailed because we're going to go over the top with this and detail it in a little bit more shortly. So I'm not even, I'm not, I'm not really putting any more than that in. That's it, that'll do. Right, I'm not going to continue with that anymore right now because I've got one I went a little bit further on. Oh, before I do, let me show you. So some of these, make them, pick them out. Some of them you don't need to. Maybe you want to make a little bit more um, squiggles around the, the base of these. And what that will do is like when I'm drawing the stamps, it'll make this look a bit darker around there. So it'll make your domed centre of your sunflower look a little bit more curved. Convex, not concave because that would be wrong. So you have to think about that. It's like the stalagmite and stalactite thing, isn't it? Oh. Right, so we've got that going on there. The other thing to do, if it's, right, you've got a wireframe, but we can play around a little bit more. So you can, look, this is where the scribbles are starting. Scribbles are starting already, all right? I'm going a little bit scribbly where I'm thinking the line might be a little bit weightier, a little bit thicker. And I'm still holding the pen a little bit further back and I can pick out some of these petals where I think maybe the shadow's going to be falling down here, maybe at the base of there, and go scribbly. Look, oh, look at me, scribbling. I don't care, look at that. Okay, still holding the pen further back. Scribble, scribble, scribble. So I'm now kind of shading, but with complete and utter just 
freedom, not worry about it. This is a, one of those things, again, you know, you, have a try, you know, the kids are in bed or you've just sitting there, you're sitting in front of the telly, get your little lap tree out, get your pen out, stamp a couple of bits and just have a play. This is the play, a bit of stamp and play. You see how that looks better already? That there, little scribbly, little bit, I see how it's coming together? Right, let me show you one I did earlier, right? That I've taken a little bit further and I stamped a little bee in there and I did the same thing and these little wings, maybe I'll thicken these wings at the base here. So it's got a little bit of a shadow there in his wings. I can see them a bit clearer. And instead of colouring him in, I've created like a little band of black there, a little bit band of black at the bottom, a little bit hairy bits for his head. And that's about it. And again, see, started to draw in some squiggles and go over the lines. Still that same pen, don't thicken the pen, just go over the lines and it'll look quirky and it'll look fun and it'll start to it's fun and it's loose but it's got a plan still the plan is i'm thickening it where i think the shadow would be so when if you've seen me coloring the other flowers and i've talked about the leaves casting a shadow and in here having less light i'm still sticking to that plan but in a scribbly fashion so it's got some structure to the whole thing it's not completely random but it's got a looser random look so it's not just going to be accidental that it looks cool at the end if that makes sense that's now ready for the next stage which is going to be a big brush with some water now make sure you this is important micron pens or the um, faber castell pens um online they also make sure they're waterproof um archival and waterproof they need to be water resistant ink because if you do what i'm going to do now and it's not you'll know you're gonna have a black splodgy splodgy mess so like when you stamp with black soot distress ink and you blend the line uh that's what you're gonna get so the next thing is i might even just use this brush i'm gonna i'm, I'm decided i'm just gonna do it so i'm gonna pick up some yellow and i'm gonna splodge in the middle of this middle of the sunflower then i'm gonna put a little bit of brown around the middle then the the edges not the middle the edges like that like if you're not feeling like you want to use a huge brush like this, that's fine to use a smaller brush if you want. But the idea is I'm going loose with the colour, all right? We're going sort of where the flower is, but not precisely where the flower is because I want the colour. That's why I wet the card a lot. I want it to wick outside a little bit of that area. And this is going to create the underpainting for what we're going to do next. So this is not the whole story. This is just, just the start of the story. So just want a little bit of colour. Underneath, like that. And if you see something happen and you think, I like it, I don't like it, you can. You can affect it to a degree which we will in a sec, because that middle bit, I'm thinking I'm going to tidy that up just a tiny little touch. But the longer you leave this, the more that will wick. See how I've just dried my brush and I've picked out a little bit of the colour there. And now I've got a highlight there if I want it. But I'm going to pop a little bit more of that brown so I can make it a little bit more controlled if I want to like that. See, I picked a little bit out, put a little bit more back in. A little bit strong there so i'm going to pop a little bit more of the yellow um right we better color the bee in a little bit let's color this little guy in a little bit orangey red oh i've covered his wings we'll have to put a bit flow flow a bit of full bleaching on there or something yep that'd be fine because we're going to go over with pen and colors to create the darker color on him as well so all right that's cool enough there right now that's already started to wick and the colour's coming out. Now I think it looks quite pretty as it is. Let me show you what we've got close up. I'm going to dry this now, okay? And then we're going to go over the top with gel pens and fine liners. So I'm going to be quiet for a minute while I dry this as quickly as I can.
should have mentioned as well, you can see how much water I added to that. You're going to need a good 300, 280 GSM card because you're going to, you're going to be um, putting it through its pieces. But I actually think that looks really cool as it is. If you want to intensify some of that colour, go ahead and do what we just did again and it'll build up and the colour, it, watercolour always dries paler. But here's what we're going to play with now. This is, this is just super fun. So, packet of fine liners, like lovely Lisa Horton's pack of fine liners here. And I'm going to pick out some colours and I'm going to use orange and I'm going to use a reddish colour. And you am use obviously green and a darker, a couple of darker greens. And if you look, I've got the little colours on the top here. Can you, can you see that there? Yeah, they're the colours I'm picking out from. And I think maybe a brownie colour and that one so you're not going to know what you've got until you take them out and have a bit of a look so if you're not sure get a bit of scrap paper and have a bit of a scribble so the first thing we're going to do we want a yellowy color orange yellow that's that's great we can play with that that's a good one keeping that and see what that one this one i don't know if it's paler or darker oh paler that's great right start with that so what i'm going to do I'm going to take this and I'm going to start scribbling, might be a little bit too pale, but we'll see, around the outside and over the petals like that. This is almost like uh, fluorescent orange, love it. Okay, like this. And you're thinking, well, what's she doing? It's gone all a little bit even more, a bit more crazy, but that's fine because what we're doing is that yellow was just the undercoat and now we're giving it crazy texture um, and pop of, pops of colour, but without having to colour the whole thing in. Your eye thinks the whole thing's darker just by popping that little bit of the colour in um, random. Well, not random, I'm putting a little bit on the tip and a little bit more maybe at the base, but scribbling still. And you can see where I've done it. It's looking more glowy. It's warmer. And that's just that one colour, and I'm speed colouring here. Really notice how much care I'm not taking. And that's when I teach workshops. That's when you say, okay... Here's the thing, just do it, just seize the day. Don't overthink it, in fact, just don't think if you can help it, that, that, try and avoid it. And then just, just, just do it. Just have a good play, bit of a scribble. We've already got a good start with that one. I'm gonna go now over with this darker orange and this is gonna bring out that detail even more. So yellow isn't gonna show up very much. We're not gonna see much, we're not gonna get much payback by using a yellow because it's already quite pale so I'm using uh, an orangey colour for the petals on the sunflower we've got the yellow in the underpainting but with this we're literally just um, adding some of that scribbly cool textures and it's about layering it when you first get the first one down you think oh I don't know but when we start adding more and more it looks cooler and cooler so see again just sort of this is what i don't know I, I, it was something i was playing with and i thought you know how do i get out of my comfort zone and really just go for it what happens if i do this and i well i think that looks really cool i just really like that look so i've called it scribble coloring i'm quite literal you know and maybe if somebody else on a, another parallel dimension because you know you think you've done something you come to it in your own way and then somebody else is doing it it's got a name and it's a phenomenal a phenomenon on the internet but hey ho you know you've discovered it yourself you've come to your own like i say come to it in a um, experiential way and um and so i'm calling it scribble coloring and you can't get any more kind of less intimidating than scribble can you so we've got that yeah oh hey it's looking already like it's popping um green let's do let's see how pale this green is like yep that's too pale so have a scribble i've scribbled it on there you'll not see it it's it's literally got to sit against a stronger green so i've eliminated that one let's try that one we can get something out of that one yep so the lighter green scribbling around the, the leaf like this like literally scribble scribble not coloring it in don't try and color it if you try to color in with this pen seriously it's like it's like scrubbing the deck of a ship with a toothbrush you don't want to do that not for pleasure no surrey bob don't be doing that just scribble it scribble 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 like that okay and this is where you can define that edge a little bit if you've lost a little bit of the detail on the leaf 
So we're scribbled with a lighter green, always lighter first. Then we're going to scribble with a darker green. And the darker green is going to be more at the bottom and around the petals. Create a little bit of shading. Think of a, think of a, well, I'm not, I can't believe I'm going to say this, but think of a, like a, a spider with no sense of direction. Right. Yeah. Not my favourite, the, arach the arachnid, I've got to be honest. But that's who I'm channeling, okay? Doesn't know where it's going. Am I going here? No, I'm going there. Am I going there? No, go there. All right, I'll stay here. No, I'll go around there. Yeah, I'm off again. Okay. Now, don't think you've got to stick to the obvious colours either. You know, who's to say I'm not going to get a bit of purple into this? <gasps> what? I might, I might, I might just do that because there may be a purple. It'll give me a little bit of a, um, a contrasting shade. Yeah, that might be cool. Like I was trying, I'm using this darker kind of sage green now. Again, scribbling. And it becomes like a kind of impressionist paint, um, painting where all these scribbles, when they layer up, then make uh, another new colour. It's kind of like you're mixing by scribbling on the paper. Yeah, right, okay, I've decided. Well, I've got brownie colours here, I think. Uh, yeah, that one. And then... Yeah, let's do that one and so this is where you can scribble around the outside to give that sunflower a little bit more contouring make push that side those sides back a little bit more a little bit more veins at the base of the petals i don't know if you can hear me pen <laughs> Think, don't think precision, think speed. Think, oh, I'm in a hurry. And you know what, it'll be better if you do. This is not a time to stop and ponder your motivation and life, the universe and level 42 and what it's all about and all that stuff. Just, just do it. Seize it, okay? And then... We can, we're almost done. We're gonna do a little bit of a dark color on the bee. You know when I said a bit of purple? Let's see what that dark purple's like. We've got a gray, I don't know. I don't really wanna use a gray. I just wanna use fun colors, really. Let's try that. Let's see what this blue. Whoa, that's very blue. And the purple. Let's try that. Let's do, let's pop a little bit of purpley color into the bee. And we could put a little bit of blue on his um, wings, maybe. And a bit of purple. You see, if you want to darken it even further in here, if you put a bit of that purple in there, or a dark blue, you get even more um, depth and shading and intensity going on like that. You've got to just be brave and just think, you know what, I'm just going to trust it, I'm just going to do it. Just do it and see what you end up with when it's done. Um, Right, and finally, let, um, actually, I was going to put a little bit of a pale blue on his wings. Let's see if we can get a little, just to give him a bit of colour on his wings. And finally, white gel pen. Right, so we'll colour some of these little bits in the middle, white now, where the centre is going to, where the texture is in the centre of the sunflower. And I haven't done this with a sunflower yet. I did this with a um, with a chrysanth, and it looked really cool. And I thought, oh, let's do a sunflower. Let's have a play. Why not wait till we're live on Facebook to have a bit of a play with the sunflower? So you can see me picking colours out because it's the first time I've I've picked them. But you know what? I think it looks pretty cool. That made me happy. Again, it makes a traditional thing like florals quite young and funky. It's um. It's all just about how you approach it. You know, we, we do florals a lot, but it all depends on the stamp, how big it is, how it's drawn originally, and with the wireframe, you've got that option to make it look quirkier, to make it look a bit, you can make all pop art or, you know, as quirky as you want it to be. A little bit of highlight on these leaves now. Where the, the veins are gonna be, a bit there. So again, with the gel pen, 
still stick to scribbly highlights on it on your leaves I'm thinking of just catching the top of this leaf here a little bit we'll pop a little bit on his head and the bee definitely on this wing that we missed a little bit there and a bit just there and then we're just about done but that's a I think it's a fun thing to play and a good exercise to try to see just how how brave you're willing to be in getting as, as loose as you can with your drawing and seeing that you know to be a good artist to be a great art you don't have to draw precisely in fact it's more fun if you can let it go there you go so hopefully you enjoyed that Thank you very much. That's just a tiny little, not even a scratch in the iceberg of what you can do with this. And a share. Love to see what you're making with it. Uh, thank you for watching. Take care.